Hi there, everybody. Um, it's Saturday, and I have most of the editing done for this video. This is a little <laughs> intro before I finish the editing. Thought I would do this speaking part now because nobody's home, so I feel a little less silly doing it. So in this video, we're continuing with the Distress Oxide album. And I'm going to show you how I colored. It's actually, it's pictures of myself printed on just um, Recollections cardstock. And then I colored them kind of freakyish <laughs> with Prisma color pencils. Because I didn't want to just simply use a picture of myself. Not to say that there's anything wrong with that, but I don't know. I just wanted to make it more arty, so I just colored it in different colors. And I'm also going to show you how I made these envelopes. There's that one, and... this one here and I think that's it for this video like I said this is a long this book took a while to make so there's probably gonna be four maybe five videos so watch the video and see more of this album and in this one I actually was able to tell you some of the colors because I think I caught on. <laughs> like first when I started making the album, I was just playing and having so much fun. And don't get me wrong, I was still having fun when doing this, but I'm like, okay, I should try and you know show the colors of the Distress Oxides and the ink pads so people can see what colors I'm using. So I'm actually able to tell you what colors I used in the second part and pretty much it's the same colors that I used throughout the whole album so enjoy so for this first part where I'm just coloring the pictures I'm not going to talk throughout the video because basically I'm coloring so I'll just play some music for you and you can Enjoy watching me color. <laughs>
like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free Okay, so here I am taking another piece of mixed media cardstock. It's the same paper that I used to construct, construct the album. And I'm going to cut it down to seven and a half inches by seven and a half. And instead of cutting it with scissors or a paper trimmer, I use the ruler so I have more of a rough edge. So I'm starting with some peeled paint, cracked pistachio, and I think ripe persimmon. I think that is the color. Yep. And I like it better when I wet the paper first, but I tend to forget. <laughs> I mean, it still turns out fine, but I like how the ink moves better when the paper is wet. And it's so funny how in so many different stages it doesn't look all that great. And then as you're heating it and the sprays start to move around, it gets really nice. Now I am going in with some vintage photo. And I believe, yeah, and some walnut stain. Now the vintage photo was an oxide and the walnut stain was not. And then I think I just added some rusty hinge. Chances are if it looks orange it's rusty hinge because I love that color and I use it a lot I'm just going in with some more of the same colors so I want it to have a dirty grungy look
Here I'm using a We Are Memory, what is it called? We Are Memory Keepers? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the name of the company. It's their envelope punch board. So you just follow the instructions, you line up your paper size, and it'll tell you um, where to punch and score. It took me a while to figure it out because it's been a while since I used it. But it is very easy to use. It's just been quite some time. I was kind of sad that some of my favorite parts on the paper were going to be at the back. Like I love that flap with all the orange on it. So when I did this, I had designed it for one page that I was working on and I ended up not liking those colors with that page. So here I go in a minute while I'm picking out colors to make a second envelope. So I'm choosing Spiced Marmalade, Rusty Hinge, and Lucky Clover. And it's the same paper again, and it'll be the same size. This is a card from Heidi Swap. It is so old. I have no idea what line it's from or anything like that. I just know it's Heidi Swap. It has, like she had some cards that had some resist in it. So all that you'll see those lines, it'll resist whatever you put on top of it. So I used a couple of those in this book. I've put a lot of my stuff in one of those carts and I'm hoping by putting the things in the cart that I'll use it more. So we'll see. <laughs> I'm giving it a chance and if it's been like a year or more and I still haven't been using the stuff, then it's time to get rid of it. So I do find it key to dry your inks before add going on and adding more layers and see how much the colors pop when you add water to it. Isn't that gorgeous? Like before the orange was kind of dull and then when it sprayed with water it just became so vibrant. For me personally, like I don't know enough of what I'm doing in order to tell you how to do something when it comes to distress oxides in the sprays. I just play and if I don't like something then I try to cover it up with another color or I scrap the piece and start over. All I do, oh yeah, look it. That's when I tipped over my thing of walnut stain. And it was just like an itsy bitsy bottle too. It was like a three pack that you get at Michael's and those bottles are small. And I was looking for my dropper so I could like suck up the ink and put it back in the bottle. It took me a while to find one but I ended up finding something. Oh there we go. I saved as much as I could. Yeah, look at all that. Such a mess. So now I need to buy more, of course. <laughs> so 
I thought I would take advantage of the spilled walnut stain and soak some up onto my paper. The other stuff I didn't try using it because there was stuff on my island and it was just flowing over to all my stuff that I did not want to get walnut stain on. So here I'm just going in with the same colors that I've been using previously. I'm just layering them up until I like what I see. I find the spray so fun to play with because everything you do, it just, you get different looks. It's just, you gotta play and just see what you like. Like I said, I don't feel like I can teach it. It's just something you do and play and have fun. I'm just adding more layers to that card. <laughs> All the stain under my nails. I'm using that punch board again. So this one I find the colors are going to work more nicely with that page that I wanted it for. And I'll still use the other envelope. That was so fast. Okay. Ripe persimmon and mustard seed. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Pers I can't see the... Is it persimmon or per persimmon? I don't know. When I wrote it down, and I keep wanting to say permission, I'm, I keep seeing it in my head, I keep seeing the M before the S. <laughs> And no, I'm not dyslexic. <laughs> it's just that word gets me. Oh, and that was mustard seed. And these stencils, it's a three pack and it come the name, it just says it's set 33. And I had somebody asked why my stencil was a different size than theirs. And it's because like, um, no, it's not Michael's. I got it from Simon Says Stamped. I think Tim just comes out with two different sizes. You can either get the large size tag and you're buying them single, or he comes out with a three pack of the same, some of the same stencils, but he puts it in sets of three and they're smaller. So I'm just going around the edge of the envelope with some Walnut Distress Ink. My ink pad's getting pretty dry. So here I'm just showing how I re-ink my ink pad. Just in case you've never done it, I mean you can have them for years and not need to do it. So this is all I simply do. I just put a bunch on and then spread it out with an old card. This is another Tim Holtz stencil and it's called Lost. This is one of my favorites. This one and the numbers. I'm covering the envelope with some distress glaze because I wanted the inks that were on the envelope to be set and not move anymore. So this is what this does. And it also I find it makes the colors a little more vibrant. 
so I wanted these to be permanent so I'm going over the whole thing. So I was going to stencil with paint on top and I didn't want the inks to bleed through. This is Antique Linen Distress Paint. And I know you're not getting a perfect image there with using that, but I like how the edges, like the paint is thicker. I like that look. Now this, I think this is mustard seed, but I wipe it off because I end up not liking it. Yeah, no thank you. <laughs> so I decide to go in, I still wanted the word on the envelope, but I decide to use the black soot archival ink pad and I'm just using a makeup sponge to apply it through the stencil. And then I'm going to take another one of those stencils from set 33 and just do a few dash lines. And then I wanted the edges a bit darker so I'm taking that same black soot archival ink and then splatting some I'm pretty sure that's rusty hinge like I said when in doubt it's probably rusty hinge so that is it for this video and I will work on the next one so I can have that ready for you for next week thanks so much for watching bye